thanks for staying with us. So, today's our Just In Thursday, and we love to talk about life issues, relationships, you know, things that touch the heart. But joining us today on this conversation is a host, a broadcaster, film, TV producer, media executive, philanthropist, journalist, uh -uh, uh -uh, and an other lover house. of shoes. Just to mention a few, the delectable Olufumilola Aduke Inyonda, better known as Fumi Inyonda in the building. <laughs> How are you doing? Very well, thank you. Before we came on the show, you were talking about health and all that. We still need to come and, to come and lecture us on how to eat right. Because we know we should eat vegetables and fruits, but if we don't understand the, the, the real science behind this. We might not be able to actually switch um, to eat healthy. So one of these days we'll bring you for health talk. I hope you're okay with that. Well, whatever you need me for. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so there are a few stories we saw online that we thought was really interesting to talk about because we like to talk about these issues so that we learn from each other. <coughs> Excuse me. So one of the stories we, uh, we read about was an atheist, and I think maybe uh, Mariam can establish the story properly. An atheist, Mary, well, and, and another girl, they were, fell in love. The two of them were together. Um, they were lovers for some time. At some point, the girl okay. traveled to they the US. Married. The couple traveled. So they got married. Yeah. Okay. So the man is an atheist, the woman a religious. And um, they had, you know, fairly same values. And they got married, had two kids. Eventually, something happened. She had to go back home to America. She was away for six months. When she came back, he noticed she had changed. She started praying in the house. And eventually, she now wanted to have the kids involved in church. And that was where he drew the line, went to court, you know, to get a divorce. And he was so afraid that um, if she got the kids, he would never see his children again because mm. now they had clearly very separate set of values. So that's and the, so yeah. the fear is, hmm, you start out with someone that you're so in love with, you think so that, you're... So that's the story. I mean, that, that's what, we're not, we're not, we don't like to reference too many people's stories. We like to just take the learnings from it. So we're thinking, two people fall in love, two regular guys. You met at the club, drinking, having a ball. <laughs> two of you are lovely, fall in love with together. And one, by Jesu, on the, after, after you got to married and you're together, one now is gang by Jesu, one became a Sunnah Muslim and with covering and everything. And I'm thinking, okay, how, do we do we draw the line? Let me let me. I will start with you. Let me start with the other ladies. Do you think it's right for somebody to say, I have found God, I have found um, Islam, I have found this new religion, and uh, if I found Buddhism, you can even find Buddhism, you can even find what the other religions they have, different different religions. <laughs> and then, is that enough grounds to break a marriage or to break a relationship? Ryan, want to start? No, let me start with BC. Your thoughts on this? Okay, so. <laughs> Um, the only constant thing in life is change. And the earlier we begin to tell ourselves the truth, that the change can go either ways, the better for us. So yeah. as you're falling in love, just have it at the back of your mind that anything can happen tomorrow, a change may come tomorrow, how do I deal with it? Um, I also believe that these are some of the conversations you can start having. Don't always assume that I met you this way, you're going to be like that for the rest of your life. Mm. If something happens along the line and our values no longer align, how do we deal with it? Mm. How do we part ways? Uh, what are some of the things that you would do? Or how would you try to get me on your side? Is it even okay for you to try to force me to be on your side? Or can we still live as friends while we have our different values? Those are the conversations we need to mm. begin to have in the process of dating, because anything can happen. Uh, I'm going through a spiritual journey, which is different from how I started. So I started out as a um, uh, born again Christian, and my husband too, born Pastor. again, born again, we're in line, values, the Holy Spirit, this tongue speaking, blah, 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 blah. But along the line, I started evolving spiritually. I evolved beyond religion. Mm. And it was a major scary thing for my husband. He kept looking at me like, one day he had to ask me, do you still believe in Jesus Christ? <laughs> I don't understand. Where are you getting all these things you're saying from? It was so scary for him because he had never seen him. We never believed that that would happen. But that is where we are. So I had to try. I kept asking for direction. How do I get this guy to understand that I am evolving? Mm. I'm, I'm becoming aware. I'm becoming, uh, there's this thing they call it, um, I'm getting more conscious of who I am and what I'm here to do. It doesn't mean that I'm calling your religion bad. It doesn't mean that I'm uh, saying that what you're doing is no longer good, but it just means that I'm growing in another level mm. and another direction. And so it took a lot of patience and 
trying to understand me. He still hasn't really understood me. Right. But I just try to make him uh, relax mm. in a way that, okay, you don't want me to push this on the show. So when I started meditating, it was, you know how Christians don't understand meditation. And he felt I was invoking demons. <laughs> it was not funny. Right. Don't get my children involved. Don't do this. I say, relax. Right. One day I begged him, right. can we do this together? Let mm. me just show you so mm. that, you know, we are very, as human beings, we judge what we do not understand. Yeah. Let me just show you. So it can happen. Yeah. But yeah. the earlier we start having this sort of conversations, mm so that we know where our minds at. Okay, ah, my, right mine on. is the other way around. You know, so I had lived life. I, had, I like music, I love hip hop, I love rap. I used to be, I used to be ghetto-ish, mm -hmm. you know, I had that in me. And then, you know, as a young girl, you move back home, you start, you start um, you know, going to church, your mommy is there holding you to camp, and then you become this nice Christian girl, and then you marry this nice guy from a nice Christian home, and now this nice cool Christian couple. But as you now enter the marriage, ghetto in you, <laughs> ghetto in you, start, you know, you hear a nice Tevin Campbell, you hear a Kniko, you hear this, and you're like, oh my God, you want to sing day, along? You, know? you want, and your husband okay, ah, in my house, you can, you know, so that that struggle is constantly there because it's like I don't, I didn't marry that person, you know, this 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 thing, this that's not who I married, though. And you're thinking. Well, so yeah, we are constantly suppressing that side because, you're like, that was my past. I, I have gotten deliverance from fella. I am no more a fella fan. That kind of thing. I'm just, you know. So let me come to you now. Your thoughts on this because a lot of women are struggling with this, especially those of us that are so religious in this country. We are constantly. So it's either we are Islamically religious or Christianity religious. We're just so religious that we constantly struggle to be who we're not or who we, yeah. who we really want to be. Let me come to you, for me on this. Me. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, I, I wanted to start by, you know, you said you wanted to look at the top stories, yeah. you know, and I would always say we should be cautious about top stories because of the kind of world we live in now. So the top stories are always the most scandalous stories. They don't necessarily represent society, mm -hmm. you know, so oftentimes we get carried away by things that are unimportant because really by the nature of the algorithm that's behind you know, all the search, all the, all the platforms that we all read, they must look for what's most sensational. Right. And the average person, this is not their problem. Yeah. So often when they say these things, I just smile. Okay. That's the way to start. The second thing is that for that particular, I mean, I don't speak for other people. Mm. We're not in their marriage, so we don't know what happened really. Right. Yeah. You know, and that's a news reporter's perspective. I remember once again, we are media people. They must, they must find a perspective that will get people interested yeah. so that they can read their paper, so that they can get viewership or ratings, you know? So, but just looking at this off the story that they told, my own instinctive reaction is that they didn't fight over religion. Mm. You know, I don't think that the story, I don't think it's because of religion they fight. If you, two people are together who have been married for a while, and something like that is enough to break their relationship, you want to mm. ask what the real problem is. That has been used as a camouflage or an excuse for something else that's deeper. Fundamental. You know, that's wrong. fundamental in the relationship which they haven't examined. Yeah. So, I mean, regarding the Nigerian society generally, you know, I would always say that all religion, my own understanding and finding through life is that most religions, when you drill down to the core, are the same. Religion is really an attempt by human beings to understand how we are. My daughter said something to me recently, I thought it was really cool. She said, Mom, we live on a giant rock okay. huh? that is rotating around a ball of fire mm. at precise distance. Everybody needs to chill. <laughs> <laughs> because awesome. what that means is that just the, just the human experience to be alive in this universe is amazing. And of course, human beings want to understand it. So from culture to culture, they found different stories and different explanations for doing this. So for example, when you, I love the example you used when you said about prayers, because meditation is a form of a prayer. prayer yeah. Affirmation is a form of prayers. Everybody is saying the same thing. They're saying it in different, different ways. ways. And unless we bring ourselves to say, you know, come, actually, we're saying the same thing. Then we mm. start finding, because what people do is they layer their own fears their own insecurities, their own aspirations on the core. So it becomes confusing. <laughs> and regarding Nigeria, people have always married across ethnicity, across religions, from time immemorial. It's never yeah. been a big problem. So some of the recent problems, if there's more, 
we might have to look deeper because we have more fundamental challenges in Nigeria. Yes, right. So those challenges may have come into the marriage, yes. and so people are using religion as a, as a way uh -huh. okay. to cover up. So we've always got to drill down to the core right. of anything before we react at all. This would be my own okay. Fantastic. reaction. So, Not that I'm laughing. <laughs> <laughs> so we like to have, because as I said, Thursdays, we like to just gist mm -hmm. about light issues, family issues, because we like to learn from each other. So relationships. So let, let, what are your thoughts on this matter? Yeah. Uh, people changing, especially yeah. their... And religion. also, let me maybe give you a little context. So on, um, sometimes we get the stories off of social media. So sometimes these are stories shared by the person themselves, what they are going through. And then we try to look at it based on um, Nigeria. Some people may be going through this in their homes. We have our general Nigerian problem, insecurity and everything, but also we have those regular relationship problems that we try to deal with daily. Mm -hmm. So in this man's case, um, he, for me, I feel that is a question of core values. Um, there's a reason why someone is religious and there's a reason why they, they can be irreligious. And for some people, they believe in, for many of the people who tend to be irreligious or are atheists, just want to believe in science. There's a reason why something happens. There's a cause for something. It has to be rational to them to make sense. And then there's a person who is religious. That religious person just believes in God, who you cannot see, but he would change things for you in a twinkle of an eye, in a blink of an eye, you know? So when you have these two come together, I feel that there was, you know, there's... we must teach our people that religion and science are not opposites of each other. That's one of the things we, we get wrong. Mm. Science is a way to try to understand how we come to be and the universal laws. Mm -hmm. Religion is similar. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons why we have some of the bigger challenges we have is because we keep saying, thinking they are different. Yeah. They are separate. Yeah. And there are many, 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 many religious scientists all over the world. Mm. So I personally agree with that. I feel science is part of religion. I mean, God is all encompassing. I don't believe in the explosion of things just happening. I believe that God is involved. But concerning this relationship mm. that we're talking about, so if you have people who, because of their beliefs, um, feel, you know, they have now values based off of their beliefs, it's hard then to have those two come together. Um, for those of us, uh, pedestrian reality TV watchers. If we watch the story of Kanye West and his wife, Kim Kardashian, he loved her to be, you know, her sexy, outgoing self. And then he found Christ. We saw the journey, like he was mm. now turning towards Christ. They had children. And now he was insisting, I don't like you dressing a certain way. And we saw the yeah. problem that yeah. caused. Yeah. In fact, now they're divorced. Let me pause divorced. you for a second. That's have... a, that's a, I have to pause you for a okay. second. That's a real direction I want us to take because these are real life issues. BC yeah. shared her story. I've shared my story. These are real life home issues that we also address after the break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. This, is, this conversation is getting interesting because Mar Mar Maram was taking us somewhere. When a woman becomes self-aware, yeah. how does that then play out yeah. in her relationship? Yeah, so just what I was trying to just go for is many people can walk through a lot of things, but when it now affects your core values, you would sit down and think twice about it. Like, is this something I would like to go ahead with? Marriage, as we know it, is supposed to be a a union of two people. They're supposed to be one, you know, the way we're told. They're supposed to be one, think alike, want the same thing, have the same vision for their lives. And then there's someone that wants to do it differently. It would require people sitting down and deciding if this is the end. Mm. And so um, in his own case, I guess for them, they felt that um, being religious and not believing in religion, that was something that he could not work with. Now, you are, we said something about having children involved. I'm just hoping that the system allows for, you know, co-parenting, and then the child is able to decide for themselves eventually when they grow up what they want. But really, when your core values, if you feel like your core values are compromised, you would not want to continue with that. I have a situation where um, I even want to just use your story, where you find that you have outgrown some things and um, this seems to be like a modern story. We hear a lot of women, some men, women were married when they were really young, while still in university, maybe, maybe the husband that paid for that university education. And then you find yourself now in your 40s. You got married in your 20s, now in your 40s, in your 50s. And you know who 
you yeah. are, yeah. you know? And that man did not ask for this. He says, he's like, you have changed beyond, this is not what we had arranged. Where are you now? Who are so you? So can that kind so of person okay. divorce? Yeah, so it's okay for that person to sit down and say to you, this is not what I asked for. And you would decide, compromise, or he moves. Men have always done it as well. We used to see it, especially, I like to use this example a lot, military officers. There used to be a time we would hear when there's a coup, a military officer was now made a governor. He would leave his Barack wife that they started off together and then marry this person that he thought could be the face of his new office. She can speak well, she does this. People have always made decisions right. once they feel that right, they have moved to a certain second. point and you so, don't so match. In this, why can I be in this scenario status. for you? I mean, based on which it's not similar to what she just said. A young girl married in church, right? Mm -hmm. And because she's in church, she's the nice, nice girl, you know, nice girl. And then she might marry this, 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 this guy, and they fell in love. But she was young, and she was being churchy, and she was being religious. But gradually, as they grew older, she wanted more of, out of life. And the man is there, has become a minister. He's now a pastor. And she's there finding, she's now an MD. This is a true story, actually. <laughs> she's, she's a bank manager. She's doing what she's meeting people out there. She's, she's traveling. She's going to different countries. And she realized that, listen, there's more to life than just being mommy Jill. And she wants to move on. That kind of person. But divorce, God hates divorce. He doesn't want to divorce. So she's stuck. Now, she's cheating on her husband, which I heard about. But the man is like there, doesn't. So the, then I'll come to Fumi, because Fumi was telling us something back then. Right? Like, what is the essence of a woman? Can a woman say, you know what, I'm done? Or must she just stay there because society expects you to stay there? But what is the essence of the human? A woman is a human being mm. before a woman. We are all expressions of God in different ways. Mm. So you've come alive now, you discourage expression as a woman. Mm. Who knows, maybe the next time you'll be a man. Who knows, maybe you'll be white. Maybe you'll be Asian. You don't know. We don't, there's so much we don't know. And I find it a bit tiring that woman's life is constantly, endlessly about men. How to find a man, how to keep him, how to maintain him, how to care for him. Where is she as a human being, first and foremost? Personally, I have a more traditionally Yoruba conditioning. Okay. And when I talk about um, Yoruba, I don't mean present day Yoruba, something much more older, I think, um, still maybe resonates in my own soul. I think that even the idea of marriage, what sort of marriage are we talking about? We're talking about our own interpretation of Western marriage. Do we even know the history of Western marriage? Mm. You know, the, the, and when I say West, let us talk about the Northern Western Hemisphere of Europe, okay. where we take it from, because of course the West is wider than that. And yeah. of course that's only a part, a small part of the world. Right. If you look at the environment, it's much more hostile for survival than these parts of the world. Here, you can basically live on hunting and gathering as well as farming. There's farming mostly year round. You can't do that in those hemisphere. So it becomes that the family unit as a survival unit is very, very important. So it's important to know which child belongs to which family because that family will farm together and will have to survive together. So at the core of it, their kind of marriage was first and foremost about ownership of land and property for farming. With time, they also, when they, started, when they became, went beyond agrarian societies to industrialized society, they introduced romanticism because that was when individualism also became fashionable amongst them. And so romanticism, where marriage now became about oh, the two of us, remember at the back of it, they also had a society, government, that secures those marriage. Whilst all of that was going on, what was going on in our own environment? In our, I will speak of Yoruba culture. Children are owned by the family, mm. not a husband, not a man, no, man or woman. Idigi, idigi. You've come from this, and look at that term, idigi, that is your root. You come from a particular family, and it is both families. Mm. So you don't come from the man's family. You come from both your mother and your father's Father. family. They protect you. So in the case of divorce, what happens? You cannot, you, the, the, the concept of divorce does not occur like that in Yoruba land. Because the marriage... If, if, if two people no longer want to be together, mm. 
they would come apart. They would discuss it with the family. They would go apart. Think about your own grandmothers and grandfathers. How many of them were married once? Mm. And which, of them, and which of them was demonized for Married. that? None. None. Not, not the men, not the women. Mm. And in Yoruba land, a woman is assigned honor by what she does, not by biology. Mm. What she does. Yalasho, yalata, yaloja. Yeah. Mm. If that had continued, some of them would have been ya engineer, mm. ya doctor, ya lawyer. Ya lawyer. That fact, way, yeah, all no, women. It is exactly. That way, societies. all women also have the opportunity to become seen as mothers. So, for example, if you couldn't birth a child because you were considered valuable as a mother of something, mm. you understand. You therefore are not disgraced in the society, so, either either by work or by the fact that. In that diggy you come from, yeah. there are children there. Yeah. You are also a nurturer, a mother of those so people. So you can be a yeah, so yeah, the the You can be a yeah, so exactly. but you're also a yeah, it, was, it wasn't perfect. Mm. But like every human, I remember everything is a process and mm. an institution that evolves with time. Had we not been interrupted, I don't know how, how we would have, have yeah. evolved. So a lot of things we take now and we beleaguer ourselves and it mm. is a beleaguering. Because when I hear this, it just sounds to me like pain. Yeah. That it shouldn't be so much pain now, you know? So and this is for both men and for women. The way we do it is almost like a trap for both the women and mm. the men. Yeah. Even when I hear the things like, oh, he doesn't want the way he married you. You in your in your Let me take this conversation. Okay. I come to you, man. <laughs> Good morning, Kelecha, are you there? Mm. Morale, so good morning. I'm yes. my crazy. Oh, sorry, no vex. Go ahead, please. Oh, sorry. It's all right. I, Morale, I commend you for this very topic. This mm. topic is quite hot. Uh, Thank you. Uh, I commend you for that. You see, I want to say something to Obadilu. Obadilu, to be honest with you, I am in love with your, with your by point of view. You have a very radical and um, uh, sharp point of view. Thank you. you see, let me tell you something. Don't take my life, but I'll go ahead and talk. Let me say something. You see, Christian preachings are strategic to, you know, restricting them, to, restricting them within the circumference of their dimensional space. They are not allowed to go outside that circumference to acquire knowledge. Any day you do that, you lose familiarity yeah. with your pastor. You see, I, I understand you, the problem you're having with your, with your husband because you are evolving. I would suggest that you try as much as possible to carry him along in your evolution. Otherwise, you may have problems. But the problem I think here is that you, you are the one evolving, not the man evolving. Mm -hmm. If you were the one evolving, he may carry you along. But yeah. as you are the woman evolving, he may not like to be carried along. Yeah. So the, Ah. No, you know, in deep. bringing it, yeah, so yeah. bringing it on the surface, I mean, I, 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 I like to go deeper. I know you, you want to go deeper. But if I can, I've not heard your views on this. No. Please, let me hear your thoughts. Fine, I'm good listening. Them. <laughs> I'm listening. When I have something to say, I will, I will talk. Um, continue. Okay, so um, back to, on, on the surface talk, talk now, the fact that when, when a, for, for example, let me use myself as an example. You know, as I am, as I'm trying really hard to retain my identity of who I am, or who I've come to be in marriage, as that is important for me, who I've come to be. I, I choose to maintain that. However, subconsciously, there's that inner part of me that, that I always crave to do other things that I used to love, even before I came into this new identity as this person. So my question is going deeper now that, is it wrong for me to crave that who I used to Why be? Why did you marry somebody without letting them see your full self the way you, you know, were? You no, see no, my you full evolve. self. So that's what I'm saying. We see our full well, self, but it's not full things. self in the beginning. I may have not been aware of, yes. Because part of the time, at what point are we encouraging people to get married when yes. they haven't found themselves? Good. That's why we always... Yeah, but you understand? You don't so, know the time frame to find yourself. That's okay. why okay. marriage okay. must not be a person, a place where you cannot find... In your home, for example, think about your family. Your family is there for every iteration of you. Yes. iPhone 4, Lele, Eleni, Oti, the iPhone 13. Mm -hmm. Me that like iPhone, I'm with iPhone at iPhone 4 mm -hmm. and iPhone 13. When it becomes iPhone 20, you'll be me, I will still be with it. Mm -hmm. Because at the core, 
I the like, iPhone. The, I like, I like what it is. Mm -hmm. If you are going into a marriage with a person who is not happy with every, he or he himself is also evolving. Yeah, we're all Whether evolving. Conscious so always, or not. Yes. No. But that's life. So we, and we're but, always making allowance for others. Not We don't expect no, them no. to make allowance for us too. No, but that is life. Life is such that we are constantly I don't changing. Want to I don't want to miss what, miss what you just mm. mentioned now. That Why do you now marry into a family that will not let you be? Exactly. So a lot of young people do not know how to pick one. Uh, the societal pressures do not let them blossom enough to pick two. So you see, your age is ticking, everything is going up, there's pressures, mother is talking, you're 30, you're 35, please find a man. And then you get into uh, a marriage where you know that this man ordinarily will not even support your dreams. Do you advise that person to proceed? So my own personal case is, I got married to somebody who, in my head at the time, in my early 20s, I knew he loved me for me. However, I turn out. Yeah. I could see it in his eyes yeah. that he was ready to follow me through the journey. Even when I would go for beauty pageants, he would carry my bag, he would sit with me. We're not even married then. He was just ready to go through. So I wasn't scared that at any point in my evolution, he would say, I'm no longer doing. Because mm -hmm. though he doesn't understand it, but as long as it makes you yes. happy. Yeah. But a lot of people I see marry into homes that... You can't change from here to here. It becomes yeah. a problem. Yeah. How do you help? I want you to help women now who are in that crossroad of how do I now marry somebody who would let me be? Because I didn't know I was going to evolve Into at this, this point. Yeah. At that time, I came from a different... So my progression has been... If you talk to my husband, I would say, ah, this one, sometimes I don't even know who she is. <laughs> he has, she has ask gone from here to here to months. ask me. Exactly. She will change. But he was, he's willing to, to go through by you, because regardless. the core of who he wants is still me. Yeah. Help women today, please, on or how they can, okay, let me come to how they can, you know, get it right. Mm. The problem is this: it is what the society puts on women all the time. If you are, you are not a woman, if you don't have a husband, that's number one. Yeah. And I don't agree with that. You don't. It's if you find a husband that you love or loves you, and you can grow together, fine. But it is not the be all and end all. Mm. Oh yes, Your life, and I, I think. Once we know that, you know, me, I'm, I'm okay. Yeah. I, but you see, I, you know okay, I, but there's I, a point. A relationship, yeah. I, if we don't marry, I will not remove anything yeah, from yeah, my yeah. body. As far as I'm concerned, we are even married spiritually. Yeah. When people ask me, I'm married spiritually. Yeah. I don't have to be married <laughs> in the paper. registry. So I, what, body will come and sign mm. on my head. But but I'll, let, I'll, let, I'll let, I'll let um, you answer BC's question in, in a second, but it's part of the, what, what, where do you put compromises? Because when you're getting married, especially, they say, once after five things, once it, once you see two or three, manage the other ones you can manage. They will that they'll tell you yeah. that don't worry. Eventually, and you grow in marriage. And yes, indeed, you actually do grow in marriage. Yeah. But somewhere at some point, Thanks. something happens, and that's where that's that's where we're trying to see if we can help women who go through this. Man, let me let you jump in. Let yeah, for me respond. Okay, I I was just going to say also in society, you know, the way that everyone is talking here right now, there are people who are listening and thinking these are rebels. There is a code of conduct that is giving to a man or a woman. These are the things you should want. If you want anything outside of that, if you do not want marriage, how dare you? Something is wrong with you. If you do not want, if you want to evolve, evolve at all, outside the code of conduct that has been placed there, something is wrong with you. And you find that many of us want to live within that code of conduct because we want to be say, we want to be told we are good people, we are responsible, we are the sort of person that should be the face and the role model of certain things. The people that do not live within this code of conduct, they are called rebels, they are ostracized, they are called different sorts of names. So you find a Nigerian now living in this society and you're saying to her, you can be this. She's not necessarily going to quickly want to be that. She'll constantly find ways against her nature to work within that code of conduct. Mm. That's well, a lot. All I'm going to say is I'm interested in the core of things, why things are the way that they are. I mean, I look at YK, for example. I think, you know, she's calm. There's a calmness about her that comes from lack of fear. I think one of the things to be really careful about is fear. And a lot of people here talk about God, but they don't believe in God. Mm. Mm. Do you understand? God is abundance. God is the fact that it never runs out. 
As you are breathing now, are you worried about your next breath? You're not worried about it. Nope. Because that is the idea of God. He's always there. You cannot run out of men. <laughs> you cannot run out of options. There are infinite possibilities in the universe. One of the things they teach people very early is to be afraid. And to cement that fear, sometimes they will deliberately try and cut you down. Mm. But you see, once again, there are infinite possibilities in the universe. There are many, 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 yep. many men. There are many, 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 many women. And even when we talk about this, we, sometimes when we are saying we're trying to help women, we also help to trap women further. Mm. We talk about these things as if men don't have similar issues. I've also read of men who say, I'm, a, I'm evolving, she's not evolving with me. I'm tired. Absolutely. So let us treat each other as human beings yes. first and foremost. Right. And the only thing I can say is one, try and resist fear. You know, and also know that if you truly believe in God and you have faith, you know that it's going to be fine for you. Oh. But me, I actually really wanted to talk about what I'm doing. Yeah. And you I'll, know, do, I'll, I'll, I'll let you do that after the break. After the break, all I'll right. Be right back. Stay, stay with us. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. You see, this conversation is so important and deep. And I think we've not even started scratching the surface somewhat. And the reason why I say that is that there are lots of people that have been forced to get married. Maybe they, they, because society says you should get married, just like YK has said. But as they grow into this thing, they become somebody else. Because many women, whether we like to believe it or not, are cheating. That's the truth. Many men have been cheating years. We know that one. But more married women today, are, I don't have the data, but you, based on the messages I get on my Instagram, based on the message I get on my Facebook, telling me, Mariah, I have, I'm in this fix. I don't know what to do. It's not because they don't want their family, they don't want their children, they don't want, the, they want, to, they don't want to stay in marriage. It's that they are not content. There's just something missing, missing within that core. The feel is missing. So they've become this new person. And they are going outside to get satisfied in different things, mm. either, either uh, friendship, companionship, um, the other room matters, you know, different things that, that this person whom they have, society had made them to marry or be, they married because of society. So they've grown. There are no more kids to say, sit down there, like, listen, you're the submissive wife, stay there. I'm coming back home, you know. At 20s, you, ac you accept it. Early 30s, you're with my husband, we accept it. Once you hit 40, 45, you become a whole new woman. You don't tell me to sit down. I have meetings to go to. I'm traveling to Japan. <laughs> I have an appointment tonight. You know, you become this new person. So, man, our mothers stayed back and said, you know what, they, they managed, they still stayed. But we, have, we are different women people today. And that's, that's, I would like to speak on behalf of my own mother, yeah. my grandmothers, and my grand grandmothers. They were never like any of these women we talk about. Mm. They, from beginning, they were always their full human beings. And they went to work as 20-year-olds. They went to work as 30-year-olds. They went to work until 70s or whatever. We must be very, very careful what we say about you know, who we are. Generalizing, yeah. You know, who we are. And you know, whatever you say is what will be. Yeah. You will repeat it over and over and over again. And I'm now 50. And most of my public life, whenever I am interviewed, marriage always comes up. I think it's a tragic shame. Because my mind has so much more to offer than the issues of marriage. My contemporary men, most of whom have ended up in very powerful positions, not because they are smarter than me. Nobody asks them these kind of questions. Nobody dissipates their energies in that way. It is a dissipation of female creative energy. You know, and we must maybe start to resist it a little more strongly and not make it the point of our daughter's lives, or indeed yeah. our son's lives, because this is just a subset of life. It is a good subset. Well, there's no good or bad. It is a subset. You know, so what the core things that are important, we must always, I mean, I, I really do like to focus on them. And I think even for marriage, the concept of marriage will change with Nigeria becoming a lot more, a lot more progressive and successful economically. Mm. Yeah. You will be more empowered. We will yeah. see there is then people will ask themselves exactly what they are doing. Why are doing, doing this? this marriage? No, that is bad. <laughs> then they will not because I, my own. If I had a son, I would I would like I would like for my son to be able to be with a man, a woman who wants to be with him. 
not because she has to be with him. And I certainly don't pray exactly. for my daughter to be with the person because she has to be with them. Exactly. But because that's she wants for me, to be with them. For me, that is the real, I want to be with someone because I want to be. Not because society has said, oh, you must. She, she must be with this person. So, and that's the mistake that we are making. It's, it's the same in our politics. In our politics, everyone is shouting, Christian, Christian, Muslim, Muslim. Why not? Who is the person that can do this job? That is what I want. Not who, what is my religion? Where am I from? Who can do this job? And it's, we have just, I don't know, maybe it is what is happening in Nigeria that has made us turn, our heads turn into. Let's have a few comments on social media yes. then we'll come so, What I, I don't understand. Osakwe says, uh, this topic has brought out what happened in my marriage, and my husband never carried me along. At the end, we broke up and separated, and it led to his death last year. Um, Corey says, no, oh, she he said some, I don't like this. So Simon Rose says, the chokehold placed on a woman is something one can't understand. Sometimes, except you are in that gender. She's saying there is more to you than what society has told you you are. Adebola says, let everyone stay on their own. Marriage is not by force. Women should stop bothering themselves on this subject matter. And Charlie, can I take this yeah, from ahead. Charlie? Charlie says, great topic, ladies. I am a man. I'm afraid of going home to my wife because her mood fluctuates and it's scary for me. Please advise. Somebody says, um, uh, Helen Asian says, we all must understand that you don't have to agree with everything your spouse stands for or believes mm. in. Even twins don't. Sometimes it's actually exciting to have different perspectives so long as you agree on the fundamentals mm -hmm. like religion. Mm -hmm. Decide before marriage what your fundamentals are. Don't pretend to each other. So if your wife never used to enjoy wearing pants in the early days of the marriage and now begins to wear pants, that's on trousers. Surely <laughs> that Nigeria. shouldn't be a problem. You have to define it. You know, so drain trousers. So you know, you know yeah. that what you just read, you know, talked about fundamentals and make sure that the fundamentals don't change. And for a lot of people, that religion is the core of them. Yeah. That I believe in God or I do not believe in God. That's the core of them. And for many people, they will not be able to move from that. But I have this tweet from Rem Rem Power Farms. He says, It's selfish to think you can just leave a relationship or marriage simply because you want to evolve. Communication is imperative, and for the partner on the receiving end, you must also be patient. All right, so we're going to be talking about what's... Yeah, go ahead. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to add that, um, you know, over the years, we've had marriages where it's been designed in such a way that, uh, as a woman, your identity is um, attached. attached to that of a man. You really do not have an identity. So I was glad to hear the Yoruba version of things, but, you know, where I was coming from, it's more like it's the man that is... So you are Mrs. So so and so. You are the wife of this person. So you are known for the husband that you have married, not for your achievements. That's another kind of culture. And so over the years, too, women have suspended themselves. So your the identity of the home is the man, and you no longer find yourself. Now the problem we're having is that some women are beginning to say, I'm an individual person, aside from my husband. Is there any way I can be my full self? Self, and you are your full self, and we come together. And the fight now is, how are you your own self when we are supposed to be one? I think that is where the conversation is heading to. Now, how do we get men to understand that your wife can still have her own personality, not swallowed by your personality, and still be your wife? Okay, so we need to wrap up on this. I'd like to, uh, um, I know, I'd like to hear your final thoughts on this and then what you're working on so that we can wrap up with this. I mean, I, there's... I really think that a lot of what we concern ourselves at are lapa lapa symptoms. You know, there's a saying in Yoruba, that means you leave the leprosy, the core of the disease, and you are, you are worried about the rashes. The rashes is the symptom of the core disease. You know, so I think that things like fixation on marriage and all of that is really because, you know, there are other bigger issues that are not addressed that need to be addressed. And that until we address those things, we won't be able to express our own individual selves as well as we want to. And as long as we live in a, co in a, in a community of people, you know, we really do need to have some sort of standards by right. which we live. So even some of the things we are talking about, like the countries, the cultures where we have married, the kind of marriage we are talking about, we are talking about a type of marriage. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, there are different the sorts tribes, of marriage. The, yeah. con the, con the societies where we have taken them from, it's not perfect there too. Yeah. But they have 
those, they have these checks and balances, you know, and institutions that can intervene where people choose to be really deviant. Do you know what I mean? All of us can be deviant, but yeah. some people can do some really deviant thing that can be damaging. So those institutions will come in. So some of the things we are talking about, when it comes to abuse of a person, when it comes to abuse of opportunity, where even, even some of the things you are worried about, we are worried about now, some of their own people, because they are from their culture, have fought a different war. So you want to just say you want to cheat and leave your wife. Well, yeah, we'll be leaving now. They will take the money straight from your... Of course, yes. from your pocket straight. Yeah. So the children we get, yeah. you know, it's not perfect. Even right. that has problems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is that we really should be more concerned as, about ourselves. One, as a society, and also the individual matters. Right. And it's important to be who we are at every given point okay. and to communicate. Fantastic. Really. So before I ask you what you're working on, so let's 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 switch it a bit. So how are you planning for 2023 elections? 2020, I'm, not, I'm planning to enjoy watching it all. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're going to be in Nigeria. So you're not going to jack I will be in Nigeria. Yeah, I so mean, you're going to I vote. Mean, I mean, I, that, that term irritates me. What does jack mean? It means that you, go to, you live somewhere else. You no, leave I your like country. It. it means that you run away. Why? Well, I've never run away from anything in my life. And we should stop looking at it that way. Okay. It shows that we are afraid. It also shows that we think others are better than us. Citizens of every country can live and go and come as they like. We should be happy that sometimes some of our people go and they come, Back. and some might not come. Also, look at other civilizations that have done some really interesting things. The more you have your people everywhere, what we want to do is upskill, upskill our people locally, because a lot of people know what they are doing locally. You know, we don't value what we are doing. It's upskill locally, upskill internet, just upskill any way we can upskill. And eventually, somewhere along the line, things will come together. I actually don't have too much of a problem with some of the chaos we are dealing with. Because when people talk about Nigeria, they say it used to be good in the past. On who stands? The Nigeria we Definitely. knew, Nigeria was created. And this is not to say it was good or bad. I'm not interested in good or bad. You know, because you, are not, you don't choose your parents either. So sitting down today and saying, my mother was bad, my father was bad, you are wasting your time. You are here. So the nation is here for now, unless we choose we don't want it. The fact of the matter is that the nation that is here for now was created to benefit certain people. Wow. And all the institutions and all of that was created to work for that period. As those people left, the more they left, the more those particular institutions crumbled. So we are now in a very interesting place. It is a time of entropy, where everything will be jaga jaga before it settles. See this jaga jaga that is happening? It is on our own terms. Eh? What you take out of the jaga jaga would then be on your own terms. So some of the countries in Africa that seems like at least we are ahead of them yeah. in that we have entered chaos already. <laughs> From chaos, <laughs> will not come. Except their, their chaos is coming. Just be looking. <laughs> so we have entered the chaos inside Naim with this. So mm. you understand. Mm. And so for me, it's fascinating to watch and, and to participate. Mm. I think our problem. No, you cannot hurry up. Let me pause you for a second. Outside of ourselves, mm. what we do matter. Mm. Let me pause you because I think there's an in interesting perspective. Ade from London has been holding for a while. Ade, are you there? Yeah, good morning. You're live. Go ahead. Sorry for holding you. It's all right. Uh, I'm calling for two reasons. Number yeah. one, I want to appeal to my sister, Abisi. Please talk to Oga, pillow talk. Convince him about your meditation so that he can understand where you are coming from. I'm doing that. Because, uh, Thank you. The man needs to be convinced. Yes. So that they can go along with you. Thank so you. there won't be any psychic outside praying in front and you will like that. God forbid. Now, so your guest, science is different from faith. So don't say they are the same. Don't convince people. Science people, they don't believe, it. most of them don't believe in God. They want to see. Faith will believe in God without seeing God. We believe in miracles. So don't say science and faith the same thing. It's not the same thing. Please don't convince people. Or the only one the world is watching. That's your own belief. It's not my belief. God bless. Thank you. Thank you very much, Adi. I really like that. You know what I enjoyed about that? Is the supposition that you can talk to me and tell me what I must do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoyed that from Adi. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you're, we're going back to the society that we live in, the fact that the chaos, with that eventually to settle. But I get scared when I walk the streets of social media. When I walk the streets of the newspapers, because every single day I read the papers, and I'm thinking, can this ever settle? Well, you're using the time I spoke about, you're using fear. Mm. 
-hmm. we are not going to get anywhere with fear. Do you understand? The chaos, and you People know, when you're killed also, in also, church, you know, when you also talked about chaos, you talked about it as if it's external. Our life, you see, as we are sitting down calm on this office, yes. so much is going on. There's a lot of chaos going on. I, I went mean, and saw somebody who gave birth, one of my staff gave birth to a baby boy recently, and you know, she was complaining about him sleeping, and I'm like, Look at, look at miracle in front of you. You see this boy, as you are seeing like this, he's creating cells. Mm. Can you imagine, as he's sleeping, he's creating cells. This is amazing. It changed our perspective. I was like, please sleep, because that sleep is what's causing all of that. Mm. So the day as that we you are, will not now, sleep, you will Exactly, know. because if you don't sleep, then how do you create the cells? That boy is growing, a human is growing as a human mm. being. So for us, that, that chaos we are going through now, the problem we have is we are resisting it. Yeah. We have to enter it. Okay. We have to enter it because at the end of the day, who's going to solve it? Oh, Who is going to solve it? Yeah. And that solving is not automatic, uh, automatic and immediate. It's an ongoing process. process. When I was driving now from VI, you know, I saw the same traffic I used to see because I've always tried to go against traffic. When I used to be in 2000 and the early 2000s, that is the same traffic on the same bridge. <laughs> and I'm like, because we haven't looked at it and thought, instead of doing yepa about it and thought, actually, what will solve this problem? Mm. We haven't made up our minds yet to become who we say we desire to be. be. When we do, all of us will know. That's why I said 2003, me, what I need to observe. I sit down and look. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not sit down and look of not participating. Yeah, but... It's also, it's a, you know, sometimes when you, you know, people talk about, you know, religion all the time. One of the things I like in there is like, that phrase that says you must be still. No. You must be still. Because if you are not still, you will, you will see, but you will not know. You will not even see. You will get involved with everything oh. just doing you like this. I'm to bring you for these philosophical still. conversations. Yeah. I really enjoying it. But what are you working on now so that we know we can look out for? I mean, it's the core as usual. So, for example, I'm like you. I'm looking at social media. I'm looking at... I mean, I really like the real streets. I like to go out and see what's happening because I understand the science behind, you know, social media. And I know how, how it can not only disrupt what we see, but also encourage the same thing to continue to be more magnified. Mm. So I also like to see what's the alternative to that. And you know, all of those things we talk about, I want to look at those issues that you are reading in the papers and look, why is it like that? And what is the history of it? So we understand it. the news is important and is great, but you know the news is to tell you what has happened now. But the question is why has it happened? What cost it? So that's what I am working on, the public eye. You know, and of course, it's something that is, is evolved and is time taking. So you cannot do too much of it. Mm. You know, because we tell a story today. It was the story of um, the, poor, the, lovely, the poor girl who was murdered on the BRT bus by Michelle. We moved on. Yeah. But what happened that's, to Bamiche's family? That's my problem. Exactly. What happened to Bamiche's family? What's happening with the investigation? What's happened? So that's the kind of thing that we're doing with Public Eye, you know. And it was interesting, it was really lovely to have an organization who would work with us on it, and that's uh, Makato Foundation in Nigeria. What I love about the guys at Makato Foundation, that's Dr. Kole, Kole Shetima and Dr. Um, Amina Mohammed, lovely woman, you know. I remember she talking about feminism and her husband's role in it too. So we have to really be careful what we take on. Yeah. You know, but these two, these people and their whole office, you know, kind of came together with me and said, you know, Fumi, what would you like to do? What should we do? What can we do together? And we develop this idea. And that's what we work on. Because we have to lift stamps in the sands of time. Mm. Yeah. Some of the things we are talking about now, it might not penetrate because people are too distracted. But there will come a time when some individuals will be still. Life brings us to times of stillness. Mm -hmm. Where you then go and say, ah, what did they say about that? Mm. And then you might be receptive to hear it. Yeah. So that's what we are creating with public eye. Fantastic. And leaving them not just for now, but for time it's, to come. And, and, Let me I'm take so this happy call. You talked about that. Okay, take your the call. call. Stanley's been calling from the UK. Stanley, Mohammed. Good morning, Stanley. Are you there? Yeah, good morning. Can You're you live. Very well? Go ahead, please. Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Um, sorry to bring you a little bit backward. I want to talk about um, the kind of marriage. Uh, what uh, the discussion going on here? 
Um, one of these uh, issues, one of these problems, you see, the cause of these things is that uh, we are the cause. In Africa, let's use Nigeria now, for example, we are the cause of all these things. We don't want to be exactly who we are. I'm calling you from London. I live here. I've been living here for more than 20 years. The women here in London, let me, I don't want to talk about the West. The women here in London, they want to be like you girls there. They want to be like Nigerian women. They want to enjoy the kind of traditional marriage we have. We have tradition. But now, we don't want to maintain our tradition. We want to live what we are not. We want to live like the white people. This is the cause of all this. I'm a Mibo man. We normally say, I'm talking to my two sisters there, yeah, they will hear me say, Mugwan Woody. The woman's pride comes from the, the man. And the, when the man is married, he, he, he refers to himself as, I'm a responsible man, I'm married. You know? So these are our traditions. This is the way we have been made. But we don't want to maintain it. Look at the way you just addressed there. By looking at you, my sister here, white, I'm married to a white woman. They are looking at you, they see that you are African, you are Nigerian. Straight away, they want to be like you. But you are not changing, you want to be like them. All right, thank you very much, Stanley. <laughs> so we have to wrap up on this, but I'm happy that. Yeah, I, no, I was just saying something. Um, I like where you, what, what you say you're doing, because that's my problem in Nigeria. The, we, the things happen, we talk about it now, and then they, we forget that. The life goes on for those people. What right. is happening to them? Like the train victims. Nobody talks about the train victims. Mm, mm. You know? It, or it comes out in the papers. That's it. Once we, move on. we move on. Shortly, all right. <clears throat> so, we all we, war. Killings. Yeah. Uh, we have to move on, but thank you so much. And, I, and we wish you the best in what you're working on. Um, we hope to see it more on TV. I said, you can't, you can't really churn it out too, more, too often, but as much as they come out, it's something that we must pay attention yeah, to. Yeah, and I can't do TV all the time because <laughs> there's all of you doing what you do. <laughs> yes. You know, and you, you must know when you should shift, yes. when you evolve. Yes, when so you evolve. So people always say to me, oh, I'm like, I absolutely don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> also, there are great people doing it. Yeah, thank and you I really so much. I admire what you ladies do. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Great admirer. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Go on a break. When we come back, we'll speak to Royal Property. Stay with us to break back. Stay tuned, your view will be right back.